What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Joanna here, founder and CEO of Supwell. Today we're gonna to be diving into running shoe foams, which happen to be the technology that informs a lot of the way that our favorite shoes behave. In this video, I'm gonna break down a few of those most popular running shoe foams on the market today, including what they're best for, how they compare to the others, and which shoes you'll find them in. Let's get into it. First up, we got EVA foam. EVA foam is that tried and true running shoe compound that's been used in classic running shoes for decades. The EVA stands for ethylene vinyl acetate. And one of the reasons it's been used for so long is because it's relatively lightweight compared to some of the other shoe technologies, especially rubber that we see in non-performance footwear. And it has some nice cushioned properties as well as being able to hold its resiliency over the long haul. So it's relatively durable. Some popular shoes that we'll see See this EVA in and some popular foams are Saucony Power Run. Here I'm holding this Saucony Endorphin Shift, which is using this EVA Power Run. You'll see if we do the squish test here, it's not going to be the squishiest, but it is going to be very cushioned. And this is one of my favorite shoes here, the Shift 3, that keeps me supported over the long haul. Another shoe with EVA is the Adidas Audi Zero SL. So it's similar to the Shift, this has a firmer feel underfoot, but it's going to be very durable and it is going to keep you protected for those everyday miles. And the last shoe I wanted to highlight that uses EVA is the Hoka Mach 5. Now this one is actually using two different types of EVA. In the top layer here, there's a super critical EVA, which is this blue. What that means is it's been injected with gas to give it a lighter and airier feel. Some other super critical foams on the market include that Adidas Light Strike Pro, as well as that Brooks DNA Flash. Now this Pro Fly Plus here from Hoka is a super critical EVA, which is really soft to the touch and it also has that soft underfoot sensation. The interesting thing here as well is, as I mentioned, the dual foam midsole has a standard EVA layer on the bottom, which is gonna be much firmer, closer to that Audi Zero SL or Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 feeling, which is gonna give the Mach 5 a really interesting ride where you have some soft and squishiness, as well as responsiveness when you pick up the pace. All right guys, next up we have a TPU foam. Now TPU stands for thermoplastic polyurethane. And TPU is a super versatile foam that was popularized first by Adidas in that Ultra Boost line of shoes. Now that Boost foam was a beaded TPU and what was so great about it was it had this cushion property but it was also highly responsive. Where there's typically a trade-off between being cushioned and responsive where you have some shoes that are soft and sinking and then you have some shoes that are firm and snappy, that Boost foam and that beaded TPU compound allows a little bit of both. Now it has been phased out a bit in the market over the past few years despite its properties like being resistant to temperature and being durable because it does not come in at the highest weight compared to the newest performance running foam which we'll get into next. But the most popular shoe on the market right now that is using that beaded TPU is the Saucony Triumph. Now you'll see here if I get it up close you can see these big beads throughout the foam. This is a very squishy one. If we do the push in test here, you can see how deep my thumb gets into this foam. This is one of the most durable and comfortable shoes because of that beaded TPU. I find it a bit soft in the Saucony Power Run Plus, but for some runners, especially if you're bigger, especially if you like a more maximum cushion feel, then this could be a daily trainer. I think the beaded TPU is a great recovery foam today because foam technology has advanced and we've shaved some weight off what that boost used to provide, but this still does have a place in the market. Now, some other brands are using TPU in their foam like Reebok and that popular New Balance fuel cell foam is likely a blend of EVA and TPU that's gone through a super critical process. So you'll see with all these popular foams on the market today, there is some blending, some mixing and matching of these different compounds, but this video is meant to serve as that high level overview of the general properties that we can find within each of them. All right guys, next up, what you all been waiting for, we got that super foam, that PIVA. So PIVA stands for polyether block amide. And this is the popular race day foam on the market today. It was first popularized by Nike back in 2017, 2018 with that Vaporfly 4% shoe. And paired with the carbon fiber plate, PIVA has been found to be highly responsive, give great energy return, and unlike a foam like EVA, which is responsive in some use cases, 
This is going to have that soft cushioned feel no matter what. While some brands may, some brands might firm it up a little bit and that's why you add that carbon plate in there for rigidity, but the standard Piba and that Pbex compound that Arkema makes, the main manufacturer who supplies Nike, who supplies Saucony, is going to have that soft feel. So if we look at the Endorphin Pro 3 or if we look at the Vaporfly, you can see they're both going to have a really soft and squishy feel when you press them in. Same thing with this foam. Let me see if I can get a good angle on this. There we go. Yeah, you can really compress this one on the push test. And if you've ever run in a Piba shoe like the Pro 3 or the Vaporfly or the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, you're gonna know it does have a nice compression and release feeling underfoot and that's why we're adding in those plates to most of these shoes to give it a bit more snap on the toe off. So some brands that are using Piba today, of course we got Saucony, we got Nike, we also got Topo in that Cyclone 2, we got Puma in that Deviate Nitro Elite, and we got Mizuno in the Wave Rebellion Pro all using Piba. So Piba shoes are gonna be the most expensive, EVA shoes are gonna be the cheapest, and TPU is gonna sit somewhere in the middle. But of course, Piba shoes are gonna have those highly responsive, fastest properties for race day. All right guys, so the last foam that I wanted to talk to you about is called TPE. Now this stands for thermoplastic elastomers. The TPE category comprises a bunch of different polymers, but there are two main TPE based foams that we see on the market today. One of them is that Nike React that we see used in the Pegasus and a bunch of their other shoes. And it almost behaves like an EVA or an EVA blend. It has a little bit of everything. It's not the most cushioned, it's not the softest, it's not the most responsive, but it is very durable. People get 700, 800 miles out of these Pegasus shoes and there's a bit of inherent stability in it as well. The next TPE foam that is very popular is that Adidas Light Strike Pro. The difference between this and the React is that this one has gone through a super critical process. So again, that means it's been injected with gas. That gives it a lighter, bouncier, airier, more responsive feel for race day. This compound is one of my favorite ones to do the squish test to. I don't, I don't know why, but it just gives, it just gives a really solid, nice bounce push off when I press into it. And on foot, this Light Strike Pro is one of the bounciest foams I've ever encountered. Can't say that about the Nike React, but again, this one has gone through that super critical process. All right, guys, there you go. There you have it. Those are some of the most popular running shoe compounds on the market today. Let me know in the comments if you've noticed any differences between running an EVA and TPU shoes. Let me know if you have any questions on these foams. I do my research and dig in deep to the corners of the dark web to find out what these brands are putting in their shoes. Not all of them are the most transparent, I will say. Nike is not very transparent and Asics is not not very transparent, so we gotta do a little bit of sleuthing to find out what goes into these shoes. Saucony is very transparent, so shout out to you Saucony for putting your dirty laundry out there for the world to see. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing. I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.